I've been skateboarding a lot recently with a normal skateboard and to avoid potential burnout, sometimes it's fun to jump on my old school skateboard, which I think is one of many reasons why so many skateboarders are switching over to shape boards. I did make a video before testing this board in the streets, but now we're at a skate park, so there's way more potential for new tricks, new variations. The question in this video is, can an old school skateboard replace a popsicle board? all together so i've created four levels of tricks to accomplish each on a different type of obstacle if i can make my way through all 40 of these tricks 10 tricks per level then i think these boards are an actual replacement for popsicle shaped decks so let's start off with what's easiest for me which is flip tricks and we're going to do all of them off of this manual pad just to make things a little more difficult i forgot how different this board feels i'll explain more after i do these tricks The reason these boards behave so differently is because of the shape. As you can see, it kind of goes in and out. There are parts that are extremely wide, parts that are about as skinny as a normal skateboard, but the tail is a completely different shape with these jutted out corners, unlike a rounded off tail on a normal skateboard, plus the nose, there is none. It doesn't concave at all. It's just completely flat and there's just a little bit of it. Boards like this actually created the lingo of why tricks are called what they are today because you didn't really have a nose that afforded the same kind of tricks you could do off the tail. So fakey was fakey and nolly was nolly and they were different. But nowadays you can do the same tricks off the nose that you can with the tail. Flip tricks definitely feel different, but I could feel myself quickly adapting to the new board. But what if we try skating an obstacle like this quarter pipe that I don't specialize in? In fact, I kind of suck at transition. So 10 tricks, let's knock down level two and move on to level three, which I'm a little more comfortable with. No surprise here, none of that was easy, but it's transition, so it probably wouldn't be easier with a normal skateboard. Actually, I like the way this board feels because there's so much surface area, so it feels a bit safer on top, which is one reason that some people might actually be into this board. One other huge benefit is actually the truck space. For grinds, it's much easier to lock into a lot of tricks that I would miss a couple of tries. I locked into immediately on the quarter pipe because there's just so much room to aim for. Level three and four are the hardest levels. Three is going to accompany other obstacles, so it's skating the ledge, manual, the rail, and then level four is actually skating the board nolly. So 10 nolly tricks off that little tiny nose with no concave, that's level four, and that's gonna be hard. Oh, I forgot on the pop shop 50, since I'm turning the board around, I have to stand on the tiny nose to lift up the front to get off the ledge. So this requires a little bit of the, the nose action. For the last three, I'm flipping kickflips onto the ledge and the rail. These are a bit scarier because the board does feel heavier. So getting it in the air, I feel like is going to be the main difference. But I'm just gonna commit to all of them 100% first try and hope that the universe is like, there you go. It definitely feels different. After that day, we did this on that round rail against the wall. I actually feel a little better with it. What? No way. 
The one I was most scared of was the kickflip front board because if you don't get your board high enough for the flip, it's pretty dangerous going over a rail, missing the board or landing on the rail upside down, but it slid super well. And because this old school skateboard has rails on it, it's harder for the skateboard to actually break. So that trick requires a lot of my weight and it didn't even feel slightly like the board was gonna bend or break or anything like that. Before we get into the last level, the Nolly level, 10 tricks that are gonna be so hard. The reason people are in love with these boards right now is the same reason that I can already feel. It's just fun. It's the same reason people like normal skateboards. There's something satisfying about the way it's shaped, about the way it feels on your feet. I think sometimes, unfortunately, skateboarding can feel somewhat repetitive, even if you're in love with it as much as I am. Some days when you take out an old school skateboard or a freestyle skateboard or just something kind of different with wheels that rolls and can kind of do the same things, it feels like you're taking kind of a break from the break. Skateboarding is a break anyways. A lot of the skateboarders right now for Pal Peralta are also doing YouTube videos and two of the skaters that I see feature, featured a lot, Christopher Hyatt and I forget his name, I think it's Victor. Sorry if that's wrong, but they skate these boards legitimately all the time. They don't even skate the other shape at all. So to see them skating Nolly with this board downstairs sets has been really inspiring and they can do any trick that anyone else can do on these boards. So I just wanted to see how different it really was. Maybe I could be the voice of people who are considering completely switching up shape. Or even if you're getting into skating, I could probably tell you that you'd be fine starting off with one of these. It's not much different. But I do have to sign off on the Nolly level. So I have to get through these tricks first. And then I actually have a few more things I want to say, not only about this board, but kind of around the whole nature of this board. Oh no, that felt a little more off than I was hoping for. Oh my gosh, no strange just accepting that you're not gonna pop. Oh my god. My brain has to calculate how to do this. It's running through the algorithm right now. Okay, yeah, I get it. I could have done it. Oh, I'm bailing. I'm bailing because it's such a new feeling. Nothing feels like it's going right. But if I just believe in myself, it should work. You have to be ready for it to be super rocket, which is scary because it, you know, leaves things open for, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, oh this is, oh my God. gonna try the nose manual nollie flip. This is the one I was most excited about trying, but I haven't even tried a nose manual yet. I'm just gonna go for it. If I lock in, I'm flipping. The fact that it didn't even nose manual, oh boy. It's really hard to flip it all the way around, but I'm hoping that's just from the non-committing. Still got two left. We have two left. The last one I think I can do, but the Nolly nose grind is the one where I was like, oh, we definitely can't do that. Maybe we can, but I don't know if I can figure out the timing in one session to figure out a Nolly nose grind. We'll try it. I don't know. I don't think this is gonna happen to be honest. Five more. We got into it perfectly. Okay, I'm gonna start committing to it. So burn the map. Ignore the signs. But feeling far away. Two years in a couple of days. I just wave my hand to the world outside. One more. It feels really good going from a position of I can't do this because there's no nose. So how am I gonna pop it high enough to do this trick? And then kind of just figuring it out per pop. But we have one left. 
This one's still gonna be very difficult. I mean, maybe more difficult, but in my head, I feel like it's a little easier than that trick, but definitely harder than pretty much all the other ones. Let's do a better one. At least it worked the first time I tried to commit to it. Boom. 40 tricks with this skateboard. We made it through all four levels, and I don't know if you know this, but my reward is buying myself ice cream tonight. I did it. Potentially one of the most interesting concepts of how people skate old school boards is they treat it like a normal skateboard. So when they skate Nolly or Switch, they could just turn their board around and pop off the same side, but they are saying, well, this is the nose. So you have to skate the nose like the nose, but it also proves just with the sheer amount of knowledge we have in skating today, what kind of tricks people could have done in the past. There's so many nose manual Nolly flip. That wasn't a trick people did when they had skateboards like this. There's so many things that we could have done and luckily we had the noses to kind of prove that we had the capability to do it, but in reality, the potential was always there. Isn't it also strange when people say a lot of tricks you do like a kickflip, you have to kick right here on the nose, the actual concave of the nose. I've said this before, is that when you flick the concave is what makes it flip, but you're learning if there is no concave, if this is completely flat, then I must be kicking here and the concave must not be making that much of a difference. It's almost like just the length alone is enough. You actually don't really need the nose to fold unless you want to do nolly tricks better and higher and easier. I'm very excited in the future to cover more footage from the people on the team. I'm gonna be hanging out with a lot of the crew and I'm gonna probably ask them in person, yo, Chris, how do you get your board to do this? Yo, Victor is his name, Christopher Hyatt. They skate these boards like all the time and they're able to nolly 360 flip down stuff so I saw the potential, today I saw the light, and I think it would be fun in the future to maybe film more on this board since so many tricks actually feel very similar, but it looks really cool, right? I think the tricks actually look cool on a board like this. Would I recommend a board like this for a beginner? I honestly don't see why not. You're gonna learn ollies the same, you're gonna learn kickflips the same, 180s are gonna feel a bit off because you can't really pivot on the nose, but in terms of the basic tricks and for a first board, you always have to evolve to a new board to kind of realize where your preferences lie. So for the first board, I really don't see it being a problem. So if you are like that school looking, then also be ready to pay a premium for a board like this because they are more expensive because they require different cutting and bigger boards, maybe? They're more expensive. I've made it a goal for 2023 to pretty much skate as much as I can, almost every day, if it's a possibility. So I have been uploading a lot of content. Two videos on this channel a week, three videos on my Progress Daily, so be sure to subscribe to both channels if you want to see five videos a week about different topics of skateboarding. I'm trying to cover more varied topics on both channels, so if you do enjoy, I'm trying to change it up, and obviously I'll be taking trips, filming other skaters. This channel this year is gonna be turning into the skate channel that I've dreamed of for a very long time, ideally. So if you're excited about that journey, as excited as I am, tune in, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time for another video. Take care, progress daily, and keep killing it.